All right, guys, today we're going to talk about ARIMA and SIRIMA, or Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average and Seasonal Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. And I'm going to run through both of those with an open source data set that you can get online. And as always, the data set and all the code from this video will be available on my website, DerekWillingham.com. So hopefully this video will help you out if you're looking into some time series forecasting and let's get into the code. All right, so the first thing that I would probably do is look at some t statistical analysis of the data. So I wanna look at the ACF plots of this and I wanna do them all together. So I would probably do a par, there we go. This is gonna be infra, man, I got my caps on. It's gonna be infra equals, uh, two, two, this should, okay. Now we're gonna do an ACF plot and we're gonna do that of data frame rec goods. And we're gonna do an ACF plot, whoops, of data frame chemists. And let's just run this, I should plot it, okay. So what we can do now is look at these ACF plots over here. So this data you can see now looking at this, uh, this data has some seasonality in it. We can definitely see that. Um, just looking at the ACF plots, we can also see that it's got trends. Uh, so it's trending uh, and it's got uh, seasonality in it. And definitely you can see that. You can see the patterns, right? That's gonna, that's gonna be a good indication of seasonality. Another one that you'll typically see would be like this right here if it fell all the way down and then did the same pattern on the other side, that'd be pretty hard seasonality uh, as well. That'd be a good indication. So we can see that there's a lot of work here that needs to be done. You can't just forecast this data the way that it is. Uh, a differencing should solve a lot of this. The next thing that I would probably do here, now that we've seen these ACF plots, is I wanna see the actual time series. So I would do the same thing there. Um, I would do plot, um, we're gonna do, well, I'm gonna plot, time series data frame rec goods. Okay, and then basically I'm just gonna do this four times just for ease. Okay, nice. Now I'm not sure if this par, if I need to redo the par info or if that'll stay, no, there we go. Okay, uh, so you can see what we were talking about. So you can see that these are trending upwards, uh, all four of them. So over time they have drift uh, um, going, they're shifting up in value essentially over time or, or goods, they're selling more year over year over time gradually. It's also very seasonal. You can see every one of these pieces of data set. This right here is a perfect, almost mirror of itself, right? Same thing here. So you can see this, um, this is perfect, right? Seasonality, you can see this. Very seasonal, very cyclical industries, all four of these. So the next thing that I would do is I would actually decompose each one of these and get a good idea of what we're looking at. And that would look like this, I believe. Let's see, I think I can plot, we can decompose. Um, we can decom, I wonder if I need a time series. We'll see, uh, decompose would be this right here. Um, frequency, I'm gonna set to 12. I'm gonna assume that this is uh, an annual uh, industry. I wonder if that's, let me see. Ooh, error, I'll use argument, hmm. Okay, so I think what it is, is it probably definitely, and you can see it says that we have an unused argument down here. I think it probably needs to be in a time series. It's probably all it is, let's see, oops. Time series, there we go. All right, so by doing this, this decompose, you can see that we took this first, um, this first rec goods, um, feature and we decomposed it. So over here we can see the observed uh, time series. We can see the trend pulled out of that time series to just look at the trend on its own so we can see that we were right, you know, just visually looking at it, there is a trend and it's going upwards. Now it'll also pull out all of your seasonality. So we can see here exactly what the seasonality looks like inside of this time series. And then we can see the, the random points of data that were inside of that time series as well. So, you know, just looking at that, we would do this for all four but this data is so easy to look at. We already knew this, right, without looking, but I'm gonna show you, I just wanted to show you that, that you can decompose a time series data set and get this kind of information. So this lets you know exactly, right? So this data, if you're gonna do an ARIMA on it, it, it definitely needs difference at least once. You might even have to do like a diff of a diff. 
um, to try and get this data stationary. But for right now, you know, I'm just going to show you how to kind of work around that. So I'll show you what happens if you just do an Arima on this, which a lot of people are going to show you that. So this will be, um, I don't think I've ever seen a seasonal Arima video actually, but this will be, um, someone's just going to do something like this. We're going to do fcast, um, let's do fcast rec goods. Um, and then they would do something like auto, um, let's see, auto da Rima. It's been a while since I've done Rima's. That's it. Auto da Rima. Um, and they're going to do that auto da Rima on time series, data frame, rec goods. Okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and forecast this all in one. We're going to do forecast, and it's going to be h equals six. Whoops, did I do that? h equals six. Um, error. Hmm, what did I do? H equals six. Not uh, Oh, okay. Well, that's probably before we, uh, before we do that, let's bring in our library. We got to bring in our library. So library, what is this? Forecast, I think. Yep, forecast. Nailed it. Done. Okay. Now let's just look at this fcast. Um, yep. Let's look at that. Done. Okay. We can see down here that we just set up an auto arima on this um, and we forecasted six periods ahead. But you can see what happens though, right here, we have the next six points and we're forecasting almost a straight line. So let's plot this to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. This would be FCAS Rex Goods, boom, plot. Okay, here's here's our plot. Um, I wanna get rid of that actually. I don't like the fact that we still we still have the, the par, par and pro going. There you go. So look. Uh, you can see here that we ended up forecasting a straight line, basically. It went up, straight line. And that's going to happen every time if you run an auto arima on seasonal data. Uh, auto aremas do not handle seasonality and they do not handle trending well. They, they don't do it, right? But you can see here that this forecast, this arima, ended up being a 111 which means that there's one auto regressive lagged period. So it's regressing back on its time series by one period. Um, it did a differencing of one and it is smoothing. It is using a, um, <laughs> sorry, it's using a average, a moving average of one period. So this actually stands for PDQ, uh, which is just a statistical way of renaming the AR is your first one or your auto regressive. Uh, the middle is integrated or you're differencing uh, and then moving average or the Q is the one on the end. So PDQ is the same as AR, I, and MA. Autoregressive integrated moving average, PDQ, same thing. So this picked a 111 model. We can see here that this is wrong. It's not gonna be right. And we know very easily by looking at this that there's no way that this is gonna be correct either. either uh, the next six months is not gonna be a flat line. So. What I would do with this data is I would dig in more into the statistical side of this, but a very simple thing that you can do on this would be to chain to force this into a seasonal model. So that can be done pretty easily and I'm going to do it in one line just to kind of show you. So this will be, uh, we're going to do an auto.arima again and then that's going to be a time series. That's going to be the same uh, rec goods. Now, oh, here, I'm going to do the same. And then now we're going to tell it, you have to tell it the, the, your frequency. Uh, and in this case, we're assuming the frequency is 12 because I'm going to assume it's monthly data over an annual period. Now that frequency is going to change depending on the industry that you're in. If you have a, a seasonality of four months, then yours would be four. If you're seasonal six months, it'd be six. Whatever your frequency of the seasonality in your data set, that's going to be your frequency. So don't just think that you're always going to stick 12 in there uh, because that could, that could be wrong, right? If you don't have a, an annual cyclical business, 12 is not your frequency. So you need to know that and you would do that by analyzing your data and having some industry knowledge. So, and then right here, what we're going to do is I'm going to force this to be seasonal. So D equals one. That should be good code, I think. Now uh, we're going to forecast this. Um, ba, ba, ba. I always like working from the inside out when I'm writing these really intricate ones. And this is going to be H equals six for our time period. No, actually put six. Okay, there we go. Now let's do this as F cast rec 
Wreck Goods, Serima. Nah, this, we don't need that should be good. Error, unexpected simple and F casts. Huh. Oh, well, that would be why, right? <laughs> let's, uh, let's actually assign this. Nailed it. Okay, now let's plot this F cast. Uh, Wreck Goods, Serima. Boom. Now, look at this, see? So what we did here was we did an auto auto Arima on the time series of the same exact thing. The difference is, is we set it, we set our frequency inside of here and we put D equals one, which is gonna force this to pick a seasonal component. So you can see up here, now we have a, a zero, a one zero one um, model with a seasonal component of zero one one uh, and it's got drift. Uh, uh, so it, it picked up the drift as well. So. Um, we just forced the model to be seasonal and we basically told it, hey, we want to do an auto arima, but the auto arima is seasonal and you're going to pick a, a season, the most optimal seasonal component. Uh, and it works the same way the auto arima goes through and picks the optimal model. You can see much, much better forecast. This is going to be a lot better uh, forecast that you can show this to somebody without being laughed at, right? So um, let's just kind of see what that did, the difference between those, right? So this this is, let's just, let's just, uh, Print that out really fast. This is Fcast, uh, Serima, enter. Okay, so you can see the difference now uh, in these two down here. So you can see that we went from um, almost having a straight line. We went from 185 to six months later, we were at 189. And then you can see that our seasonal Arima, our Surima, went from 189 to 205 to 316, back to 207, then down to 191, back up to 201, right? So you can see that it's fluctuating much more seasonal like our actual data, and you can see that it matches better. So I would do this for every single one of these, and then probably um, this down here would be good for other individuals to use. So this is gonna be part one of a two-part series. I'm actually gonna show you in the next video how to make an entire Shiny app out of this and deliver this to your boss and they're gonna love you. They're, it's it's gonna be amazing, I'm gonna show you. All right guys, if you liked the video, please give it a like. Comment down below, that helps the algorithm a lot on YouTube, it really likes comments and likes, so it'll help the channel grow, it'll help me a lot and I'll appreciate it. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of video, this format, or if I should teach these in a different way. This is the first time that I've actually taught something like this, so just let me know. I wanna make sure that I'm doing something that you'll enjoy and also get value out of. So I hope that this helps you out. The next video we're gonna go over is a Plotly uh, graph and shiny application that we're gonna build. And that'll be something that you can launch and give to clients uh, for them to be able to view these in real time kind of. Every time that you update it, they'll be able to see it and it'll be fully reactive, kind of like a Power BI or Tableau dashboard, except you can do it all right out of R with your forecast. It looks great. People love them and it'll make you look like a rock star. So. I hope that that video uh, will be out shortly. I plan on putting that together today as well. So let me know if these videos help. I, I really hope that they do. If you don't like the format, let me know. Give me some suggestions of formats that you would enjoy. And until next time, guys, try not to work too hard.